Okay, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? Nope. Yes, okay, good. <laughs> one time, one time I did an online class and for the first 30 minutes they couldn't hear me <laughs> and I didn't know and I was giving probably one of the best talks I ever gave. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, anyway, as you can tell, I'm recording this and some people are, some of my students are joining in. And um, before we start, I actually want you guys to stand up just for a brief moment. <clears throat> so one of the things that I'm very, I guess, kind of passionate about is understanding why people have pain, because I've had a lot of pain <laughs> in my body. Um, some of it is just from stupidity. <laughs> some of it is from age. Some of it's from stress. And all of these things, you know, play a huge part in us having pain. And, and so one of the um, kind of paradigms, I guess, in yoga, which I've discovered is not necessarily a good paradigm or, or a correct paradigm, is that if you have pain, then you should just stretch it out. And, you know, if you have shoulder issues, you know, you've got to stretch that crap out. <laughs> and, and, and a lot of times it feels good in the moment. Like if you have a bad back, you uh, uh, stretch it. And for a moment it feels good. And then the pain comes back. And the question is, well, why does the pain keep coming back? And so there's a lot of explanations for that. But from one perspective is because all parts of your not body are not working harmoniously with each other. So that's going to be kind of part of the class that we're going to explore is starting to bring all of those parts. In sort of today's theme, because I'm going to be teaching today and tomorrow, so today's theme is focusing on hips and hip flexors, and then tomorrow we're going to focus more on neck and shoulders. A little bit of shoulders, but more neck, because that's my passion project right now. <laughs> so what I want you guys to do is just just kind of stand and take a step forward and then take a couple of steps back. Don't think about it, just kind of see where your feet land and just notice how you feel in your body. And so for some of you haven't probably done a lot of experiments in your life before, like where you do something, you check how you feel, you do something and then you come back and check how you feel. I like doing that a lot because it kind of informs me about, oh, this is the difference. Or if I do a certain um, activation, then I have a certain range of motion. But just look down at your feet right now. And so just look down at your feet and also notice the quality of your, I guess, lower back stability, the stability of your hips. Because a lot of what we're going to do is going to focus on building uh, stability. Okay. Now, we're going to go in a completely opposite direction. <laughs> so this is where we're actually going to start today is in relaxation, and then we're going to build up from there. And this is a very specific uh, relaxation technique. But the way that I want you guys to set up for it is um, using your blankets. And if you don't have blankets, you can use towels. Um, you can use different things. But take uh, two blankets, so you should have uh, three blankets. Take two blankets, fold the two blankets in half like this. <clears throat> and you're gonna just put them sort of in the middle of your mat. We're gonna um, come back and lie back on that. Now, just as a disclaimer, Two blankets might be too much for some of you. We're going to stay lying down for about, probably about 12 minutes or so, 13 minutes. Um, so two blankets might be too much. So if it is, then just take away one blanket. <laughs> if one blanket is too much, take away that blanket. Um, what the blankets are doing, though, is they're helping to extend the spine. And one of the reasons why... A lot of us have pain in the body is because our spine um, isn't, for lack of better words in this moment, in good alignment. And so what the blankets are going to do is help to get our spine back into extension, back into 
Another word I like is elongation, to elongate the spine. So you're going to um, come and sit like this, but before you do, get the other blanket ready, and you're going to start to roll that blanket up. Now, all of us are going to roll it up to different thicknesses. Again, if you don't have a blanket, a yoga blanket, you can use a, um, a towel. I use a towel a lot when I'm on the road. I don't have, I don't bring, I don't travel with my Mexican yoga blankets. <laughs> so. Okay, so you're going to come up to the blankets and just literally lie down. And you'll notice that those blankets kind of come into the lumbar spine. Oh my God, that's so delicious. I just, every time I do that, my back goes, <laughs> and the other blanket you're going to bring over and use that one for your neck. So I want you to just put it in your neck. Now, the instruction was just roll it up as much as you're comfortable doing. And if it's too much, then just unroll it a bit. If the, again, the blanket is too much, Just take a cup or take one of the blankets out. That's completely fine. Um, eventually, if you guys want to do this as a practice, you, you do do it. And then eventually you do work up to even three blankets. So really getting that lordotic curve back into our lower back. But again, you don't want it to be um, agitating you. And again, if it is agitating, then just take it take both of them out. Okay, so this is a very specific relaxation practice and it ties in perfectly with our theme today, which is muscle activation, specifically in the hip flexors. Um, but part of being able to activate muscles is being able to connect with the muscles. And this is the gift of yoga, is that yoga inherently teaches us how to begin to access uh, certain muscles. So lying in corpse posture, your arms are out to the sides, become aware of your breath. And sometimes what I like to invite people to do is to bring their hands to their floating ribs and just kind of have the hands there for a moment, just more on the side body, not on top, but really more on the side, and then breathe in a way that you can not only feel the rib cage expand upward, but you literally start to feel the rib cage expanding into the side body. So there's this filling of breath, this filling of prana into the sides of the body. When we're starting to look at activating muscles in the body, this is really done through the parasympathetic nervous system, the part of your body that goes into rest and digest. And this is where the greatest amount of healing begins to take place, is when we can get the body into a parasympathetic response. The fastest way to do that is to breathe deeply in. So just take, keep your hands there, maybe one or two more breaths, and then let the hands drop to the sides when you're ready. And just with your eyes closed, I want you to open your mouth and stretch your tongue out and down. Okay, nobody's looking at you so you can make the most funniest face possible. Just kind of do that for a moment. Feel your whole uh, neck, or sorry, your, your face tensing up. And then exhale and re retract the tongue and close the mouth and relax. And then tense all the muscles of your face, pulling them down towards the tip of your nose. So kind of scrunch your face up and feel all the muscles of your face moving to your nose and then relax, release the tension and relax. And then just maybe just for a, a moment, not too long, but just a couple of times, maybe just gently Roll the head side to side, just gently, slowly, slowly. 
And then pull your shoulders forward towards the ears. And then let them come back to neutral. And then pull the shoulders up towards the ceiling, just the shoulders, and then let them relax. And then come back to that deep breath. So you breathe deeply into the ribs, into the floating ribs. And as you're doing that, there's a little mantra or affirmation I want to invite you to use today. And that is, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And so every time you kind of breathe, start to either repeat that affirmation or feel that affirmation. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And so that as we go through each of the next body parts, start to feel those body parts becoming healed and in a perfect state of health. Now consciously tense your right arm. Don't move it, just tense it. Don't make a fist or lift the arm off the floor. And as you tense your arm, make the fingers straight and stiff and then hold the tension and feel the tension moving upwards from the fingers and all the way to the shoulders and then just relax and release the tension. And then take a couple of relaxing breaths. And then do the same now on the left side. So you're going to consciously tense your left arm without making a fist or lifting the arm off the floor and hold the tension and feeling the tension moving upwards from the fingers all the way to the shoulders and then release the tension and relax. And breathe deeply in and deeply out. Feel the side ribs expanding. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Now again, tense your right arm without tensing any other part of your body. Hold the tension, feel the tension moving upwards from the fingers to your shoulders, and then consciously release the tension. And then relax. And then repeat the same process of tensing, holding, and then releasing with the left arm. <laughs> Breathe deeply and evenly. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Good. And now tense your hips and buttocks. Squeeze the glutes towards each other. Briefly hold the tension and then release the tension and relax. And breathe deeply and evenly and feel the sides of the rib cage expanding. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And again, one more time, tense the hips and the buttocks. Hold briefly and then release. Relax. Breathe deeply and evenly. And now tense your um, right leg by pointing your toes away from the body. Keep the rest of the body relaxed. And then release the tension and relax. And breathe deeply and evenly. And then tense only the left leg by pointing the toes away from the body. Keep the rest of the body relaxed. And then release the tension and relax and breathe deeply and evenly. Good. Now do the same process again on the right leg. Point the right toes away. Feel the tension in the right leg moving from toes all the way upwards. Hold the tension, feel it, and then release it. And relax. And then do the same on the other side. Point the left toes. 
Again, feeling the tension building in the left leg, and then release the tension and relax. And then starting from the toes, relax your body upwards from the toes, through your legs, torso, arms, neck, and head. And as you exhale, feel the breath exhaling from the top of your head all the way down to the toes. And as you inhale, feel the breath moving all the way from the toes to the crown of your head. Inhaling deeply. And exhaling deeply. Inhaling. Exhaling from the crown of the head to the toes. Inhaling from the toes to the crown of the head. And you take a few more deep breaths just like this, please. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Feel a resplendent healing energy filling your body. There's a sense of dissolving. Returning to wholeness. A resplendent light within filling you up. I am healed and in a perfect state of health. All righty. So just to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Bend one knee and just pause and then bend the other knee and kind of just lift the um, hips up enough just so you can slide the blankets out and then slowly allow the hips to come back down. And then again, lift the chin up just a little bit just so you can slide gently the, the blankets out without really moving too much. Nice. Already you can start to feel a difference in the spine, in your relationship with the spine and your body. Okay, from here what I'd like you to do, and the instructions are very specific, so I'll do my best to explain them, but you're going to just bring the arms out to the sides like a T and then bring your knees into your chest. So you're not gonna hug the knees, you're just gonna bring the knees into your chest and just squeeze them in as much as you can and then you're going to slowly let the knees come over to the right about halfway and just pause there for a moment. Pull the pubic bone upwards towards the navel and as you do that, you're gonna feel the abdominal muscle shorten and then bring the knees back into the chest. Pull them in, use your muscles to pull the knees in, and then exhale and bring the knees halfway over to the left. And as you're doing that, if you wanna look the opposite way, you can do that. It helps the rotator muscles in the neck. Inhale back, the knees into the chest, and exhale, bring the knees over to the right. 
pull the pubic bone upwards, and then bring the knees back into the chest, and then exhale and over to the left. Again, pull the pubic bone up. Bring the knees back into the chest, and then bring the knees over to the right. Just again, halfway, no more. Bring the knees back up and towards the chest. And then exhale and over to the left. Just halfway. Good. And then back up into the chest. Bring the hands down beside the waist along the floor. And then what you're going to do here, just a few times, you're going to inhale, push the heels up towards the ceiling, and simultaneously bring the arms over the head. And then exhale, bring the knees into the chest and bring the arms back down beside the waist. And we'll do that a few times. Inhale, push the feet up towards the sky, bring the arms over your head, and exhale, bring the hands back down beside your waist. Now let's use that bhavana, that affirmation. Inhale, press the knees, the feet up, bring the arms over the head. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Exhale, the knees back into your chest. Inhale, press the feet up. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And exhale. Now do that three more times on your own. Just at your own pace. Use the affirmation, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And exhale. Nice. And then the last one, let the feet come back down to the floor just for a moment and take a couple of deep breaths. Okay, so the next one I want to show you guys, can, can you just sit up for a second? I'm going to show you what we're going to do. So you're going to have the legs straight. This is very specific. You're going to rotate one leg out. So we're going to work the right leg first. And then you're going to bring the right leg up as high as you can, and now you'll notice that my left leg just kind of bends a bit. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to keep that leg straight. That leg can come up a bit. That's fine. And this knee can also bend. It's going to bend because you're externally rotating the leg. Then the second part is to lift the chest up as high as you can. And then the third part, and this is a little tricky, you're going to press the foot up towards the sky. And as you do that, the pubic bone will lift and pull inward, and all the muscles in the abdominal area will just contract, okay? So slowly come back down, or come down, and we'll do that together. So bring the, turn the right leg out, so externally rotate the right leg, bring the right leg up to the sky, bend the knee, or let the left knee bend, okay? Don't use the left foot to prop up. So if you feel like you're using the left leg at all to compensate, just let the left leg off the floor just a little bit or just let it kind of hang there. Then lift the chest up and then push the right heel up to the sky and hold it and slowly back down. Let everything relax. I told you we're going to do this a few times on the right side. So let's do the right side leg again. So bring the right leg, externally rotate the right leg, bring the right leg up. Remember the knee can bend. Lift the chest or the head up and then push the right leg up as high as you can and hold. And slowly back down. Good. And again, externally rotate, lift the leg up, lift the chest up and then push up. Push that right heel up towards the ceiling. And slowly back down. 
Good. One more time. Rotate the right leg. Lift the right leg up. Lift the chest. And then lift the foot up and hold it. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And slowly back down. Good job. <laughs> Do you guys feel that? <laughs> awesome. Turn the left leg out. Bring the left leg slowly up, as high as you can. And again, the right leg can bend or the right knee can bend, so don't worry about that. Lift the chest up. And then push the left heel up towards the ceiling. Again, if you're using the right leg to compensate or the right heel, just lift the right heel a little bit off the floor and that'll get you using your muscles, and then slowly come on down. Remember, slowly move the body. Stay in that relaxed breath. Breathe deeply in and out. And then slowly rotate the left leg. Certainly rotate. Bring the left leg up as high as you can. Push the foot up. Lift the chest. Two three, four, five, six, and slowly come down. And then slowly rotate, lift the left leg back up, lift the chest and the head, and then push up, lift up as high as you can, three, four, five, Six, and slowly back down. Good. We'll do that one more time. So rotate the left leg. Bring the left leg back up. Lift the chest and shoulders. And then push the heel up as high as you can. And hold one, two, three. Think about the tensing relaxation practice we just did. Tense up the abdominals as much as you can. And then slowly back down. Very good. Inhale deeply. And exhale deeply. Very good. So grab one of your blocks. <coughs> and what you're going to do is bring the block in between your thighs. So bring the block in between your thighs. And then bring the knees into the chest. And yes, you are squeezing that block. You don't have to squeeze it for dear life, but <laughs> you are squeezing it as much as you can. Okay, so now slowly start to straighten your legs. Bring the legs up towards the sky. And then bend the knees and bring the knees into your chest as much as you can while squeezing the block. And then slowly start to bring the legs out about 30 degrees over the floor and just hold it there. Now kind of feel like your thighs are inwardly rotating as you're squeezing the block. And then slowly bring the knees back into the chest. Slowly start to bring the feet up towards the sky, straightening the legs. Again, squeeze. And then bring the knees back into the chest. And then slowly start to straighten the legs, pushing the legs out about 30 degrees. And squeeze and hold. And then bring the knees slowly back into the chest. And then push the feet up towards the sky. And then slowly back into the chest. And then slowly start to bring the feet out about 30, legs out about 30 degrees over the floor and hold it there. Again, inwardly rotate the thighs. And then slowly back into the chest. And then push the feet up towards the sky. And 
and then slowly back into the chest. And then bring the legs out about 30 degrees. And then squeezing the legs, bring the knees back into the chest. Just gently bring the block out. Put the block to the side. Bring the feet a little bit wider and then let the knees come together and just take a couple of deep breaths there. Again, there's always the invitation to bring the hands beside your floating ribs. And as you breathe into the floating ribs, you repeat that affirmation, this bhavana, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Okay, we're going to just do something on one of the major um, hip flexors. And again, this information, sorry, the instruction is really specific. So you're going to take your left ankle and just bring it below your right knee. It's kind of like you would for a runner's stretch, okay? Then you're going to take your right hand and bring it towards your uh, left knee. Now, don't worry about if the hand reaches the knee because what you're going to do is then just bring the knee to the hand. <laughs> and bring your left hand and just kind of bring, find your navel center and then your left pelvic bone. And sort of in the middle of that, I want you to take your finger and press into your abdominals. And then press your knee, your left knee, into your right hand, and you're going to feel a muscle pop up. That muscle is your psoas. So just hold it there and keep doing that isometric contraction. And then relax, take a breath, and then do it again. Press the knee into the right hand. And relax, take a breath. And then do it again. And then relax. And do it again. It's nice to leave that left hand feeling the psoas working and relax because it will start to get your mind the conscious mind connected to one of the most important muscles in the body. And do it again. One of the most important muscles in relationship to lower back stability is the biggest hip flexor. But this hip flexor also connects and wraps around the entire lumbar spine and even lower upper back and relax. And do it again. And relax. Good. Bring the left foot back down to the floor. Bring your right foot just below your left knee. Bring your left hand towards your right knee and then bring the right knee. Just rotate the right knee towards the hand. And then bring your right hand, find the navel center, the right pelvic bone, and then the space in the middle. You can kind of bring your fingers in there. And then press your right knee into your left hand. And then you'll feel that psoas engage. And relax. Take a deep breath in. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. 
And again, press the knee into the hand. And relax. And again, press the knee into the hand. And again, feeling that so as engage, you're literally shortening the muscle. And relax it. Again, press the knee into the hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, and relax. And press the knee into the hand. And relax. And again, press the knee into the hand. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and relax. We'll do it one more time. Press the knee into the hand and hold one, two, three, four, five, and six, and relax. Very good. Let the foot come back down. Turn over, come onto your stomach. We're gonna do a couple of things here. The first thing is we're going to um, activate the glutes. So you're going to bring, bend your one knee. Now as you're doing this, really try to focus on not compensating or using other parts of your body like your hands or your opposite hip, okay? So just lift up as much as you can. Now you're gonna bend your right knee, take your right foot a little bit to the right, uh, sorry, your right knee a little out to the right, just a, about 10 degrees. And without lifting the right hip, just let the right foot come towards the left leg. Now it doesn't have to touch, that's not the point. It's just rotate the, you're externally rotating that, that um, right femur bone. And then lift the right leg up. And you'll feel this on the outer edge of your right glute. It's kind of delicious, actually. <laughs> and then slowly come down, take a breath, relax, breathe in. Okay, let the foot come down and then engage the glute this time and then lift up. Again, try not to use your left leg. Notice if there's any tension in your left leg, relax it. Just use the right glute to lift up and then relax down. And just relax the foot for a second, shake out the glutes. And then bend the right knee, bring the right knee a little bit to the right, let the right foot come towards the left leg. Engage the right glute and then lift up. Two, three, four, five, six, and slowly down, relax. Bend the right knee, take the right foot to the left leg, engage the right glute and lift up. And then slowly down. Bend the right knee, take the right foot over to the left, Lift the right leg up. And relax. Good. Just take a deep breath in. Feeling the side ribs expanding as you breathe. Nice. Bend your left knee. This time, take the left knee a little bit to the left, about 10 degrees. Then let the left foot come towards the right leg. Engage the left glute and then lift up the left leg. Now, remember not to use other parts of your body to compensate. You're really focusing on isolating the left glute as much as possible. And then relax the leg down. Straighten the leg out. Bend the left knee. 
Take the left knee out a little bit, left foot to right leg or towards the right leg. Don't let that left hip pop up. And then lift the femur bone off the floor and feeling the extension in your hip flexors. And relax the leg down. Bend the left knee. Left knee out to the left a little. Left foot to right leg. And lift up. And slowly down. Bend the left knee. Left knee out to the left. Left foot to right leg. Lift up. Holding two. Three, four, five, and six, and back down. And bend the left knee one last time. Left foot over to right leg, lift up. As you're holding this, think about that affirmation. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And then relax down. Bring your hands forward. Just relax your forehead onto your hands. And we'll take a few deep breaths here. And as you breathe, feel that bhavana saturating the tissues of your body, saturating the cells. There's this kind of resplendence that is left in the wake. Of this mantra that permeates the cells, revitalizing, re-energizing. Okay, now come over to the side, um, kind of like you're, yeah, you're on your side, and just have your hand resting or holding your head, and bend your knees. Bring your left hand just on top of your, your left knee, and what I want you to do is just very slowly, almost to the count of six, maybe not that slow, but very slow, is to slowly press the knee up as high as you can towards the ceiling, but using your left hand to kind of resist it, okay? And then slowly come back down. And we'll do that a few times. Slowly come up. Again, creating that resistance, going up, but don't lift, the, don't allow the right knee to come up, okay? So open up as much as you can and then very slowly come down. It's two muscles that this really works on shortening. One of them is glute medius. Slowly come back up. I'm going to do this a few times. And the other one is really important rotator muscle for the hips. It's called the piriformis. It gets a lot of abuse. <laughs> So this is an incredible posture or simple technique of starting to strengthen the piriformis. And you're using gravity to go to your own end range of motion and just holding it there for a moment and then very slowly allowing the knee to come back down to the other knee. Nice. And then very slowly come up. Just do it one more time. Inhaling, exhaling, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Okay, when you're ready, we'll just switch to the other side. Using your right hand on top of that right knee, 
very slowly lifting it up. You might notice that there's a difference between both sides. When we finished doing the other side, it was probably a little bit more fluid, less gummy. And now you come to the other side, you can kind of feel that almost as gumminess in the muscles. <laughs> You're literally, through these slow movements, starting to what we often call warming them up. But we're actually not really warming them up. We're actually, what we're doing is we're reminding the brain that these muscles are there. <laughs> and the more that the muscle connects with the brain, the better function they have. There's better functionality. Let's do that a couple more times. Beautiful. Nice. All righty. Come back onto force. <clears throat> Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, kind of round the back a little bit. Inhale, lift the chest and heart. So go to a complete extension, to a comfortable extension, moving slowly. And then exhale, go to complete flexion. Inhale, lift the chest and heart. And exhale, and round. Nice. So inhale. This time what I want you guys to do is come to neutral. Hold on to neutral here. And then exhale and tuck the toes and slowly come into downward facing dog. And we'll just do this a couple of times. You can inhale, bring the knees softly to the floor. Really slow it down here. Think about that one exercise we did when we externally rotated the leg and we brought the leg up to the sky and you could feel your core exhale into downward dog. You could feel your core shortening. So as you bring your knees to the floor, kind of tune your mind into those muscles. Inhale, bring the knees down to the floor very slowly. And exhale and come into downward dog. Do it two more times, this time with the um, affirmation. So inhale, bring the knees to the floor. My, my, oh, sorry, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. Just pause and downward dog just for a moment. If for no other reason, it, sometimes it feels just good. <laughs> and then very slowly start to walk your feet up towards your hands. Or halfway is also fine. Bring your hands behind your back or to your waist. Elongate the spine. Navel the spine and then bring yourself back up to standing. Inhaling deeply. Now before, <laughs> before we continue, I asked you guys at the very beginning to notice how you're standing. So take a step forward and then just take a step back and try not to think about it. Don't overthink it. And just notice when you come back to a neutral stand, how are you standing? How is it different for yourself? 
you might notice that there's more structural integrity. Maybe. So this get you one of your blocks. You can use either one. You don't have to use the wooden one, although it is heavier. <laughs> In between your thighs. Good. One of the muscle groups that doesn't get enough press <laughs> in yoga and also get a lot of abuse sometimes is our adductors. And adductors actually connect right into the ischial tuberosity at the pelvic floor. And so if you take the block out, you might notice the pelvic floor just dropped. And if you didn't notice it, put the... Uh, block in there and squeeze the block and you might notice the pelvic floor lifts. And as the pelvic floor lifts, what else starts to lift? The abdominals. So when we talk about core, it really is starting a lot lower. And if the adductors aren't working, everything just kind of goes <laughs> It's not a nice image, but it's true. <laughs> So, so using the block is one of our best friends in some of these yoga postures. So inhale, bring the hands, reach up. Good. And what I'd like you to do is just sit back into chair pose. Look, just take a quick peek onto your knees. You want your knees to come as much as you possible over your heels. Lift the chest up. Allow a little bit of lumbar curve. And as the lumbar curve is there, we're going to engage the muscles in the lumbar spine by bringing the biceps back. Keep the integrity of that posture and then exhale and slowly, you can keep the knees bent and let the, come into a forward flexion. Again, keep the knees bent here is completely fine. And then bring the arms forward, reach forward, come back into chair pose. Again, pull the thighs back or pull the thighs into the hip sockets. Bring the biceps back a little bit more. Lift the chest and then inhale, straighten the legs and exhale. Bring the hands to namaste. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And then inhale, bend the knees, bring the arms, reach up. Again, pull the thighs back, lift the chest, allow a little bit of lumbar curve in the, in the lower back, okay? Lift the toes up, and as you lift the toes up, you're gonna feel your energy going more into the heels of the feet. Exhale, come forward. Good, inhale, this time just come up halfway. Bend the knees, reach forward. Now feel the manubrium in your chest reaching forward. Create a little bit of curve in the lumbar spine, but pull the navel in and the pubic bone up, and then slowly come up into chair pose from there. <laughs> and the most important adjustment is lift the corners of your mouth. And then inhale, come and stand. <laughs> and exhale, namaste mudra. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Okay, everything is good in threes. So we have to do it one more time. So bend the knees, bring the arms, reach up. Lift the chest, lift the toes. Feel your whole spine coming alive here. Lift up and then slowly come forward. Navel the spine as you come forward. And then come up halfway. And then come on up into chair. Sit back a little bit more. Lift the chest. Bring the biceps back a little bit more behind the ears. And then inhale, stand. And exhale, namaste. Okay, and then let the block come down. Okay, so come up to the front of your mat. 
and then br um, bring your left foot back, okay? Square the hips to the front foot, okay? Bring the hands behind the back. You can take the right hand and clasp the re left wrist. Inhale, lift the chest, and then exhale and come forward. Now, as you come forward, try not to round. Keep the spine elongated, even a little bit of a lumbar curve. Navel the spine. Lift the chest, draw the shoulder blades back and down, and then inhale and come back up, okay? So keep that kind of integrity in the spine as we come back and um, forth. If you're a little bit wobbly, just separate the feet a little bit wider. Widen your gait a little bit. Inhale and exhale, come forward. And inhale, come back up. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Exhale, come forward, navel the spine. Inhale, come back up. And exhale, come forward. Good. Inhale, come back up. My body is healed in a perfect state of health. Bring the left foot up to the right foot. And then bring the right foot back. And this time, flip the hands so that the, yeah, right hand to left wrist. And then inhale, lift the chest, and exhale and come forward. And inhale, come back up. And exhale, come forward. Really slow. Keep the spine elongated. As you come up the next one, use the bhavana. My body, on the inhale, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And exhale. Inhale, back up. And exhale. And inhale. And one last time. And exhale. Good. And then come back up. And then step your back foot up. Just bring the hands to namaste just for a moment. Take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Feeling a sense of balance, stability, and ease. Okay. This time, bring the feet wide apart. I'm going to do triangle pose. Um, turn the right foot to the right. Now, one of the things that I want you guys to focus on here is to keep the hips in line, okay? So don't let the hips kind of pop out, okay? So think about the block in between the legs, okay? And we are talking about adductors earlier. Adductors kind of, even though they don't biomechanically start at the feet, they kind of energetically start at the feet. So think about adduction starting at the feet, and as you do that, you're going to feel all of the adductors starting to engage and lift up. Cross your arms, and what you're going to do here is, again, without popping out the left hip. So if you feel like your left hip's going to pop out, just bring your left hand to the left hip bone for a second. Um, and then when you want to, you can just recross your arms. But all you're going to do is bring your right shoulder down to your right hip and hold it there. So kind of rotate the chest up so there's a little bit of extension 
in the uh, spine and then come back up. So just look at me really quickly. So don't come into it like this. Actually, kind of there's a subtle even rotation. You're kind of rotating the spine almost to the left. You're not, but that's the action you need to do to compensate so you don't kind of rotate in, okay? So again, take the right shoulder to the right hip. And back up, and do it again. And back up. You might start to notice you're going further each time, and come back into it. Very good. And come back into it. Come back up, sorry and then come back into it. Last one. But this one, what I want you to do is then let the right hand come down and the left hand up. And then if you want to, bring the left arm over the head, having a delicious opening through the left side of your body. If you want to go for broke, take the right hand, reach for the ocean. And then slowly come back up. Oh, if that doesn't clear the nostrils, I don't know what will. <laughs> the sinuses. Turn the left foot to the left, right foot in, or right foot in, left foot out. Again, cross the legs. And then, sorry, cross your arms and then slowly bring the left shoulder to the left hip. If you want to keep the right hand on the right hip just to stop it from popping out, you can do that. And then come back up. And then come back into it. Left shoulder to left hip. And then come back up. And left shoulder to left hip. My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. And come back up. And then come back into it. And come back up. And come back into it. Last one. Just hold it there for a moment. And then let the left hand drop and the right hand up. Try not to hold yourself up. And if you want to, take the right arm over the head. And if you want to, take the left hand and reach for the back of the room. And then inhale, come back up. And then exhale, step up to the front of the mat. Bring the hands to namaste. Inhaling, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Okay, so this is kind of a fun little experiment. We're going to do an experiment. <laughs> um, just come into tree pose. <laughs> As I'm, I have a wobbly tree today. <laughs> okay, and then come down. <laughs> just a, it's just an experiment, and then come up on the other side. So you can kind of see like what your balance is like right now. <laughs> I got no balance today. <laughs> okay, and then come on down. Okay, so come on to all fours. 
And just as we did before, I asked you to find a neutral spine. So if you kind of go into extension and then flexion, so arching the back and then rounding the back, and then you find the kind of neutral place. So there's a space that is in the middle, it's neutral. And from there, you're gonna lift your right leg up and then lower the hip and lift the leg up higher and then lift the left arm forward and then lift both the arm and leg up as high as you can. That's it. Very good, Patrick. Lift that arm up higher if you can. That's it, nice. And then slowly down. Good, lift the left leg up, lower the hip, and then lift the leg up higher without lifting the hip. Okay, lift the right arm, and then lift the arm and leg, and lift them up as high as you can. And then slowly down. Good, lift the right leg up, lower the hip, lift the leg up higher, and lift the arm, and then lift the arm and leg. And hold. And then slowly down. Lift the left leg, lower the hip, left leg up, right arm forward, and lift both up as high as you can. And then slowly down. And right leg up, lower the hip, leg up higher, lift the left arm, and left arm and right leg as high as you can. And then slowly down. One more time each side. So left leg up, lower the hip, leg up higher, right arm forward. And then lift both up as high as you can. And slowly down. And then lift the right leg, lower the hip, and left arm, and both up as high as you can. Nice. Okay. Now come and stand back up again. And do tree pose and see if it's different. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> My body is healed and in a perfect state of health. Okay, lift the right knee up in front and the hands to the hips. Lift the knee up higher if you can and then see if you can straighten the leg and hold. And slowly come down. Okay, and do it on the other side. Coming into tree. Good, and then slowly lift the left knee up and try and lift it a little higher and then straighten the leg. And slowly down. 
good. Okay, come on to your backs, please. And once you're on your backs, keep your knees bent. Last pose. It's my favorite pose. So you're going to inhale and lift the hips up as high as you can. Um, bring the arms out to the sides or over your head to the floor behind you. Whatever you want to do is fine. But just take the arms away from the area just below your hips. And then slowly come on down. Okay, bring your feet a little closer if you can towards your hips. And then slowly come on up. Now as you're up here, really focus on squeezing them. Sometimes I'll actually go in and check them out. <laughs> Make sure that they're engaged. And then lift them up a little bit higher. And then slowly down. And then come on up again. Push down in the heels of your feet. And if you can, energetically pull the heels of your feet towards your shoulders. And then slowly come on down. Come on up again. Lift up a little bit higher if you can. And then come on down. And then come on up again. Lift up a little bit higher. You might notice it's a little easier each time because the muscles contractibility improves and then slowly come on down and then come on up squeeze the glutes squeeze them squeeze them squeeze them and then slowly come on down and from there Start to stretch the legs out and just take a short, short, short break. We already did the big relaxation earlier. But start to feel your whole body alive, muscles active. This kind of feeling of resplendence. Of resilience. Of strength. Determination. Indomitable willpower to do, to be, to create. And it comes from this feeling of being healthy, of feeling healthy, of feeling vibrant. Invite relaxation. Invite letting go.
my body is healed and in a perfect state of health. I am always in touch with the resplendent healing energy and vital life force as it flows effortlessly and easily in my body. Let's wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. Let's bend one knee and bend the other knee. And just roll gently over to the side. Just pause there for a delicious moment. feeling a new sense of vitality, of health, connection. And slowly come up to a sitting pose. Just Find a comfortable seat just for a short moment. Let your hands rest somewhere on your thighs or knees or lap. The spine is lifted, elongated, and fully integrating the practice. And just feeling the culmination of the practice as it resonates in the body. And the statement, my body is healed and in a perfect state of health, no longer is so much of a statement as it is a feeling, an attitude or truism, a paradigm. Namaste.